first of all, I wanted to start this interview with a big thank you. Uh, thank you for coming here in Russia. Thank you for giving your fan base here such a once a lifetime opportunity to see their hero because it's uh, it's so cool and it was so unexpe unexpected and we really, really, really appreciate it. Thank you. It was unexpected for me too. <laughs> Uh, first of all, I had I have to ask you about Trotter Man. Uh, could you tell uh, the audience uh, uh, what is it about, how it was created, and uh, what we can find in these comic books? Well, the the company that makes proton therapy uh, contacted me. Um, they had the idea to do a comic for kids mm -hmm. about proton therapy, but they had no idea how to do that, and so they got in touch with me. Um, and I was, you know, I had never thought about doing anything like that before, but I really liked the idea. So basically it takes the story of what proton therapy, what a child goes through, what anybody goes through, what the process is, and turned it into a superhero story so that you would get all the information, you would know what it is that's going to happen, but in a more friendly way than just the doctor saying, here's a list of things that are, you know, gonna, gonna go on. Um, and that has led now, they, we've, that the Proton Man is the first one and then we've done two more and, mm -hmm. and, and have another one somewhere out in the future to do. Um, so again, I had never thought about it at all, but I really liked mm -hmm. helping children, you know, the, giving it, um, Cause what it, they need. Yeah, I mean, a child with cancer has got enough problems, so something that can make mm -hmm. them happier yeah. to, seemed good. And it's useful. I mean, it, mm -hmm. it's, it's, a, it's a tool, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. For, the, for the kids. Yeah, that's a great social activity, so thank you for that. Yeah. Uh, the next question is about your uh, Marvel years. Mm -hmm. um, if I recall correctly, you wrote uh, about 13 issues of Captain Marvel Volume 1 about Marvel. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I want to ask you about uh, Captain Marvel issue number 34. Uh, fighting with Nitro, mm -hmm. uh, dangerous gas, Nitro yeah. sealed the gas tank, etc. Uh, we all know now mm -hmm. that it led to the death of Captain Marvel by Jim Sterling. Right. And I, would, uh, I want to ask you, and it's a pretty mm, important question because uh, there is a lot of things in your career uh, uh, that uh, can be answered by the answer of this question. Uh, did you know at that point of time that uh, this no. will it? No. No. So Jim Starlin just took it as an explanation. Yeah, um, Starlin, um, Starlin and I worked together a mm -hmm. lot back in those days yeah. and, and he was ending his run on it mm -hmm. and I was beginning mine so we kind of worked out this, uh -huh. this issue that would kind of move it along from one person to another. But that's all it was. Mm -hmm. And then later, um, Jim, Jim's always had a fascination with death, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. uh, Thanos, of course, means yeah. death. Um, and so he came up with this idea of the death of Captain Marvel. Mm -hmm. But that was just, he kind of looked at the history of Captain yeah. Marvel and said, there's a place that I could... Plant. Ex yeah, <laughs> that I could explain it. Yeah. But a lot of comics, a lot of comics is like that. Wow. I mean, that you do things uh, and I, I did it a lot for myself that I would be writing a story in which this, this, and this were going to happen. Mm -hmm. And along the way, I'd go, well, it'd be kind of cool if this happened, too. And I don't really know uh -huh. what I'm going to do with uh -huh. that. But I'm, you know, I'm confident enough that I can just put that in there. Just in case. We were, well, we were talking earlier about yeah. Steve Gerber's yeah. Elf with a Gun, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm sure that's what Gerber had in mind, except he never got to the second part <laughs> where you explain it, right? Yeah. Um, I want to get a, some Elf in this comic book. Yeah, but I, I called it throwing plates in the air. I mean, uh -huh. it's like you're kind of spinning and you throw a plate mm -hmm. up and you know it's going to come down, mm -hmm. but it's not coming down today. Uh -huh. So you you know you write the story and set up something interesting, and then it's then it's then later you're supposed to come up with what the interesting thing actually means. And I enjoyed doing that. I liked I liked if I could make this this story interesting, then I would figure it out later. So that's a lot of comics gets done that way. Uh, you know, in Russia uh, there is um, some uh, that means. Uh, 
uh, hang uh, hang gun. Uh, mm -hmm. If uh, there is a room and you will see the gun hanging from the wall, right. it will shoot at the end. So right. it's something yeah. like that. Yeah. Just hanging guns uh, that will be used by you or someone else uh, in the future. I'm trying to remember who said that. Um, Chekhov. Chekhov, okay. Yeah. If you see the gun in Act yeah. 1, it has to yeah. go off yeah. in Act yeah. 3. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, so the next question is, uh, uh, at first it was plain and simple and short. But I decided to make it a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. Why Betsy Walker? It was a short version, yeah. but <laughs> yeah. the, long, uh, the long one is... Uh, Betsy Walker, wo she was introduced into the Marvel Universe uh, in Fantastic Four, yep. if I remember correctly. Yep. You decided to expand her history and uh, her story, uh, and to, you even created an alter ego, Hellcat, right. for her. Uh, in Amazing Adventure, you uh, make her the second make her second appearance, I think, in Amazing Adventure. Yes, yes. Uh, and it, uh, it, it was iconic because even like in Marvels by Kurt Busiek, you can see the Betsy Walker who is rooting for beasts like when yeah. he joined the Avenger. Uh, why Betsy Walker? Why not, not Tessie the Typist? I don't know, <laughs> someone else. <laughs> well, that's a good idea. Um, when I started, well, okay. The way it worked at Marvel was if you were the Fantastic Four writer, uh -huh. then you were also in charge of Doctor Doom and... and, mm -hmm. and uh, the Black Panther, and yeah. before there was the Black so Panther. The yeah, you were in charge of the world of yeah. the thing. But the Beast had no real world mm -hmm. at that point. The X-Men, which people can't really believe these days, but the X-Men yeah. had failed as a yeah. comic. Yeah. Um, and so they had the idea, well, it was a period when they were doing Werewolf by Night and mm -hmm. Dracula, and they thought, well, then maybe the beast, if he looked more like a werewolf, uh -huh. maybe just by himself he could do this. So as the, as the new guy, just that was my first series, right? Yeah. They said, okay, write the beast. Okay, fine. And I could bring in the other X-Men, but there wasn't really anything beyond that. And in, ter in trying to like build a world and mm -hmm. expand the storyline, I, I needed more characters. Uh -huh. And so I, uh, now why, I mean, uh, I remembered that Patsy uh -huh. Walker had appeared in the Fantastic yeah, yeah. Four. And I thought, okay, the only, the only woman in that series was, was a spy who was, who was going to be bad to our hero. So I thought well, an, another woman mm -hmm. who's a nice one, and that sounded like Patsy Walker. Yeah. So that, it's exactly what we were just talking about. I brought her in. And in that first series, she gets the beast to promise that he's going to do something for yeah. her. And then the series ended. And yeah. so I never had to explain what mm -hmm. that was. But then later, when I was time, when I was doing the Avengers and uh, I had come to the end of the whole Mantis run and it was yeah. time to kind of redo the Avengers the way the Avengers mm -hmm. does, yeah. new, new team, I thought, well, the beast is still not in a series. They still hadn't done the new X-Men mm -hmm. yet. So I'll put the Beast in the Avengers. <clears throat> and once I did that, I remembered, oh yeah, he promised Patsy Walker he was going to do yeah, something yeah. for her. So that's what I decided to do, to bring her in. And what she wanted was to become a superheroine. So then, you know, the cat had existed for like three yeah. issues once upon a time. Yeah, yeah. Nice looking costume. Yeah. Nobody was using it. It's like, okay, but I, you know, I'll call her the Hellcat because it sounds more interesting. So it's all very organic, mm -hmm. you know, at least for my writing. Um, I like to just sort of go with what seems right at mm -hmm. the time and, and trust myself to kind of yeah. pull it together. So again, if, if, if like Gerber, mm -hmm. I had somehow not gotten to the second part of it, Oh, we God. would still be wondering what it was that he promised Patsy Walker, but you know, um, so it was. It was just one thing leads to another, and 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 then in that Avengers, I really liked her as this kind of very straightforward, simple yeah. girl, and then Moon Dragon was in it at the time, who was this completely superior. Yeah. You know, and I thought those two would be interesting to get. You know, it's just that's the that's what you do. Yeah.
That's true. Uh, because it's funny, you know, when you're try uh, when you're taking someone from uh, slice of life, uh, Raman's teen uh, uh, co comic book into the world of superheroes, and she can find the, her play there, right? And uh, she really ha has a really good fit there. So yeah, it's well when I you know when before I was working in comics, I was a fan. I was yeah. reading comics, and in those days, comics were cheap. Yep. And Marvel was still publishing westerns and romance books and all that. I read all that stuff, and I was just, you know, I was as interested, not as interested, but you know, I mean, I was, I, I liked mm -hmm. the Patsy Walker soap opera romance uh -huh. stuff because it was a story, uh -huh. right? I mean, they they developed it, her boyfriend Buzz, and her, you know, I mean, all this stuff. Um, so I was familiar with Patsy mm -hmm. Walker. I mean, I knew Patsy Walker as more than just somebody who appeared once in the superhero world. Yeah. She had her own world, and so, you know, um, it just comes from reading a lot of comics, yeah. you know. That's how it occurs. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I want to ask you about your unofficial crossover uh, oh, yeah. of 1972. Uh, for those who uh, don't know, uh, in 1972 there was an unofficial, subtle, I don't know if we can call it crossover, yeah, but it's yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. crossover between DC and Marvel, uh, where uh, Mr. Inglehart, uh, Jerry Conway, and uh, Len Wynn, they uh, created uh, three stories, two for, for Marvel, it was uh, Amazing Adventure and Thor, Thor yeah? Yeah. and Justice League of America, where they made a meta issue and they put themselves in, into the comic book, uh, where they're driving uh, uh, on the uh, Halloween, I think, uh, yeah. yeah, it was Halloween, and they're meeting different heroes and uh, making a lot of references and Easter eggs there. Uh, the question is, uh, what was the reaction of Marvel bullpen at that time? Uh, because it's it's kind of bold move to make such it's, a crossover, and it's you know it's it it probably in retrospect says a lot yeah. about me because again I was I was the totally new guy, mm -hmm. um, but there used to be. A, a big party and parade up yeah. in Rutland, Vermont yeah. for Halloween. And it, and it for a while, it was the thing to do if you were working in comics mm -hmm. in New York to drive up to Vermont. It's a yeah. five hour drive, yeah. but it, you know. Um, and so we actually went, Jerry Conway, Len Wein, Len's wife, Glynis, wife, yeah. and, and me. We went up in my car, um, it, it, the muffler fell off. This all really happened, right? It's based on a true story. Right, it's all based on a true story. And so we were up there and, and we said, well, somehow, you know, the idea came up, this would, let the, this would be kind of cool if we could do this. And again, in those days, you were allowed to do anything mm -hmm. that you wanted to at Marvel, not necessarily DC, but at Marvel you were. Um, and so Len and I had no trouble, no, Jerry and I had no trouble yeah thinking, well, we could do this, but the Len wanted in on it too. So um, we figured out how to make this work. And I, I, I can tell you Marvel had no problem with it. I don't know if, D I mean, I don't recall D Len getting in any trouble, but I don't really, I wasn't working for DC mm -hmm. then, so I don't really know. Um, but it was fun for us to work it out to, that each, each series, each book mm -hmm. has its own Thor has a Thor story, the yeah. Justice League has a Justice League story, but you can sort of watch us come in, interact with people, and go out, only to come in and go in, in, in the next series yeah. too. Um, you could do anything, and 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 that was you know sort of very early on when I was learning. You could you can do anything here if they you know, because Marvel only had two rules. Again, I can only speak really for Marvel. Yeah. DC has always been very corporate. They've always been much more corporate than yeah. Marvel. Uh, at any time, but Marvel only had two rules. When they, when, when I was given my books, they said, you have to make this book sell and you have to turn it in on time every month. Mm -hmm. And if you can do that, then you can do anything else you want to do. And if you can't do one or the other or both of those, then we'll just fire you and get somebody else who can do that. Cause we have so many books now, we don't want to spend all our time micromanaging yeah, all these yeah. books. That was the ge the genesis of our being able to do whatever we wanted to do, and again, it sold and it was in on time. So, I mean, I've done other things. People, I did the the Captain America thing where the president ended up yeah. being the bad guy, yeah. and people say, "Oh, really? That was a thing." It's like, 
it sold and it was in on time and this, so there was no editorial problem with that at all. It was after Watergate or before? It, it was during and be, during. but it, but the part where the president, I mean, the part of the revealing of yeah, the, the revealing was before Nixon was resigned. Ah, okay. Um, everybody knew that he'd done it, yeah, right? Yeah. And and uh, I, that was a case where I was writing Captain America, oh, okay. and I'm like, in it's supposed to be the real world. It's yeah. supposed to be the real New York and the real world, mm -hmm. and everybody in America was fascinated by this whole Watergate mm -hmm. thing. And so it made no sense to me that Captain America, if he was a real guy, yeah. would ignore this. So I decided to do a sort of, I took the, the elements of Watergate and built that into a story, a right? And, and the, the story itself ran six, seven issues, whatever, but it, yeah. but it was clearly coming to an end yeah. and Nixon still hadn't resigned, but I knew, you know, in those days, in those days, if the president yeah. broke the law, you, yeah. There were there were consequences. Yeah. That's changed, but um, uh, so I you know, and I was I was mostly interested in the effect it would have on Captain yeah. America, you know. Uh, so again, it was like it's you could do. It was a period of nomad, yeah. Yeah, yep. yeah, because he he decided he couldn't stand for America yeah. anymore after this, but he still wanted to be a hero, so he became nomad, yeah. and then. Um, it, there was never any question that he would come back to being Captain America at some point. But I wanted to take him on this journey and just yes. sort of see how that would work out mm -hmm. for this character. Because I, you know, I, I, I believe in each of these characters when I'm writing them. You know, they're real people to me and not in a psychotic sort of way. Yeah, but I yeah, mean, yeah. it's like this guy, I'm, what would this guy do mm -hmm. in this situation? That was, that's what interested me with all the characters yeah. that I did. Oh yeah, it's the, the, that makes sense because uh, if you don't believe in your characters, I think you can write a great story with him. There is a lot of uh, best of Batman stories lists mm -hmm. on the internet and magazines, and uh, almost in every one of them you can find your detective run, uh, detective comics run. Um, you, well, basically you made Batman the one he is now. Mm -hmm. uh, he, you made him uh, darker, uh, you, you added darkness, pulpness uh, mm -hmm. to the character. Uh, and uh, I want to ask you, uh, at that point of time, uh, do you wanted to change something? Like maybe you didn't like Adam West TV series, and you thought that uh, it could be it could be darker, it could be it could be pulper, uh, or it was just uh, something else. No, I well DC had had hired me to like revamp the entire Justice League. Uh -huh, yeah. D, DC had been the number one company for a very long time, and then they weren't anymore. Yeah. Marvel had passed them. Um, and so they had a new publisher at DC and she called me and said, I want you to come over and do for the Justice League mm -hmm. what you did for the Avengers, mm -hmm. to give them personalities, to give them mm -hmm. stories, you know, to give them, to make them more than just statues in suits, yeah. you know, which is mostly, they didn't really have any personalities. So actually in the Justice League, I did that with all those characters, but I said, I want to do Batman specifically because I really like Batman. Yeah. And so my my thing there was i wanted to know more about bruce wayne i wanted yeah. to know about the guy inside the costume because that makes you know then he's a person then he's somebody you care about and that's why i invented silver saint cloud to give him to give yeah. him a girlfriend a love life so that you could see the human cost of being batman for example um but the other thing was there had been random reprints from the early days of the of the series mm -hmm. and in the first couple of years particularly the first year of batman's existence yeah. it was very dark it was very Orange. pulpy they it had come it had come out of the whole pulp thing mm -hmm. you understand that i don't know if that's a if everybody in russia would know what a pulp yeah, what pulp yeah. was now, but now they know, I think. yeah but so um because the pulps had had the shadow and and, yeah. and all that um so I wanted to get that darkness mm -hmm. back, and I went back and, and read. DC had a library mm -hmm. where they had bound all the volumes of everything mm -hmm. they'd ever done. 
Nobody ever went in there. I mean, it was like when I said, I want to go in the library and read the early Batman stories. They're like, sure, whatever. <laughs> you know, um, it led to the whole archive edition <laughs> thing later when they said, oh, there must be a market for this. But um, so they, somebody Xeroxed all the different things and I went yeah. home and, and read them. And, and I really wanted that pulp stuff and I really wanted that Joker mm -hmm. as, as the homicidal maniac, not the funny guy that he had become. Yeah. There was a whole, you know, there was like 35 years where the Joker was just a, yeah, a villain who was looked funny and mm -hmm. did funny things and so forth. I wanted to get the scary Joker back, the dark, pulpy, scary Joker, because then he's a better counterpart to Batman, right? I mean, all that stuff is organic again. How does it all fit together? Um, and so the Joker being a homicidal maniac was important, but I didn't want to just go, okay, I read this stuff in the 40s, mm -hmm. now I'll just replicate it. Yeah. I want to come up with something new. And so then I came up with what, with the whole laughing yeah. fish thing, right? I mean, I needed a plot that c could make sense to a crazy person, uh -huh. but you could tell that it's a crazy <laughs> plot, you know, that it makes, it's like, no, but he thought it would, mm -hmm. it would be cool. So all that, again, is just me trying to really make the Batman everything that I thought the Batman mm -hmm. ought to be. Mm -hmm. I was very lucky to get Marshall Rogers and yeah. Terry Austin to do the art. And I did not know this until we did a second run in the mid 2000s. Mm -hmm. I find I had never heard this, but when Marshall and Terry were doing those books in the mm -hmm. 70s, yep. DC, which is very corporate, yeah. would call them in every month and go, this is not DC artwork. We don't like this. You need to really? change this. Yeah. And fortunately, they were rebels enough that they said, <laughs> no, we're not going to change it. And then everybody now goes, oh, that was great Batman art. And, and it was, but DC didn't see it at all at the time. Um, and, and, um, but the reason it was great Batman art was because they loved the Batman as much as I loved yeah. the Batman. And Batman is a wonderful character and the world that he lives in is a one, you know, there's just, that's good stuff. Um, so I happened to get mm -hmm. two guys that, DC didn't want, but but they knew <laughs> how to do this, right? So the whole thing came together, and yeah. so yes, now people go, oh, those stories are like, you know, but it was it was all. I mean, we I've talked in, in other places that um, when I write stuff, I wanted to be an artist when I started out, yeah. and so when I write things, I can see how it would work on the page, mm -hmm. but I don't expect it to look like that because yeah. that's how I see it, and I'm going to give it to somebody else mm -hmm. to draw, and I don't want them to be handcuffed. I want them to, yeah. you know, get get what they want out of it. Um, so it just it was just all organic and just sort mm -hmm. of. After I wrote them, after I wrote those scripts, I went to Europe for the first time, and we were my wife and I were spending the winter in Mallorca, um, and I got a package from New York which had all the comics. I had not I had not seen them. I'd left the country, right? Yeah. And I opened them up and I saw that stuff for the first time, and I and I honestly said, I'm not particularly, I'm not at all religious in that sense, but I said, thank you, God. You know, but this just looks, it was just, it was so perfect. And, and uh, you know, I've written, I'm sure I've written other things that I would be just as happy with, mm -hmm. but the art wasn't quite as good or, you know, and so the, the, the people can't separate. I've found over the years, people read a comic and that's, that's what they're looking at. Yeah. Very few people can kind of go, oh, the story was good, but the art, you know, or vice versa. Mm -hmm. You just get, so the fact that those stories turned out so well was just, Thank you, God, you know? Um, almost last question. Okay. Almost. See, I said, uh, told you I'd give you short answers. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, we were right for that. Um, you had a lot of pseudonyms. Uh, in the world. Well, okay. one mostly, John oh, Harkness. John yeah. Harkness, yeah. And, on, and Spencer, no? You yeah, know? actually, yeah. Doing Spencer. romance yeah. stories, yeah. yeah. What? Did the story behind these names and uh, why did you use uh, pseudonyms without uh, instead of your own name? Well, in the romance stories, the romance, oh, yeah. in the romance stories, the idea was that it was comics for women slash girls, whatever. From 
and it, it didn't have to be written by a woman, uh -huh. but it just sort of seemed. My sister's name is Anne, and mm -hmm. she married a guy from Spencer, Indiana. <laughs> so that's where Anne Spencer <laughs> came from, right? Um, but I only used that probably only once. I'm oh. not sure. Um, and then John Harkness was yeah. just a name. Whenever I felt that somehow the story wasn't as good as it ought to be, mm -hmm. that if I had been rushed, I had a deadline, I had some screw up something, um, I would do John Harkness. It's interesting um, to me, uh, when I was doing the, the Batman Justice League stuff for yeah. DC, they asked me to do Mr. Miracle too. Mm -hmm. And I did, I think three Mr. Miracles and then I was going to leave the country and go to Europe. Yeah. And then just, I mean, literally, like the night before I left, they said, everything else sort of fell through. Can you write us another Mr. Miracle story? Uh -huh. So I wrote this thing like really fast. And I thought, this it's not going to be good because I really didn't have time. But people now tell me, oh, that's one of my favorite issues, you know. So you don't, you, you never really know. But, mm -hmm. but generally, if you see John Harkness. And then later, w uh, at the end of the Marvel Age, they were becoming... As they said to me, you know, uh, we're more interested in lunch boxes and selling mm. selling merchandise yeah. now. Yeah. Um, and so I had this whole, I was in the middle of this whole Fantastic Four thing. And they said, oh, you've got to like simplify it and make it, you know, mm. much more accessible. Mm. So then I started putting SFX Engelhart, mm -hmm. which SFX is a thing for sound effects. Yeah. Right, and even when I got tired of that, then it just became John Harkness, I think, yeah. or or whatever. So it usually means if if you see John Harkness, it usually means I wasn't happy with what was going on. But um, otherwise, I thought if my name is on it, then I am responsible for it, yeah. which was so it better be good. You know, it better be as good as I can do. You yeah, know, it. yeah, yeah. Uh, so the last. <laughs> Question. Um, uh, I was always wondering uh, when I, I'm meeting with uh, some comic book creators, foreign creators, uh, could you recommend our audience five comic books or five series or five limited series or one shots, uh, two, like, let's say two titles from Marvel, two from DC, and one alternative? Well, I can do two from DC, although they was originally with. Uh Warrior comics uh -huh. in England. I, the Alan Moore stuff, V for yeah. Vendetta, and and Watchmen. Yeah. Um, has the Watchmen TV series come over here yet? Oh, uh, yep, yep. Okay. Uh, but by Len Landlof, Len, Len, I forgot the name. The director is Landlof. Uh, oh, Len yeah, Len yeah, I know Len who you mean. Yeah. Damien Lindelof. Lindelof. Yeah. 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 Um, I mean, those are great. Um, I'm trying to think, you know, Marvel. that, yeah, I mean, I like, I like pretty much all Marvel, but I'm not sure that there's anything that's like, where you can go, oh, yeah, that's the thing, you and know. You can always say uh, Defenders by Gerber. Okay. No, no, no. <laughs> whatever you want. Well, I, you know, I really liked the, the 1960s Fantastic Four yeah. by Stan and Jack yeah, yeah. when they were all happy with each other and, <laughs> and, and, and. I just loved Kirby, you know, I really liked Kirby in that era mm -hmm. because he could sit there and he could turn out five pages while we're having this conversation, yeah. you know? I mean, he was so fast that he could just go bing, bing, bing. And there are covers from that era. There's a mm -hmm. cover I really like from like Fantastic Four 28, I'm mm. guessing now, but it's got Doctor Strange and it's got the Submariner yeah. with it, yeah. right? And it's just, you can, t you can look at it and you can see he drew it in five mm -hmm. minutes. It's just... <laughs> Boom, you know, but it's great. It's really great, and the and the the sort of casual greatness of the whole thing, just the you know the the pride and the and the and the pleasure in doing this that just comes through so much. But that's a run. I mean, and that's I'm not sure what you would, yeah, you I know, run. I mean, well, you could actually um, you the, the first Galactus series yeah, with the yeah. Silver Surfer. I mean, that's oh, the by Stan and uh, Buscema. No, by, uh, by Stan and Jack. Opposite. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fan, uh, it was yeah, Fantastic yeah. Four, 48, uh, 49, 48, and 50, yeah, yeah. I think. Uh, Galactus and Serious Surfer. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's, that's their height. I mean, it, it sort of started yeah. going downhill after that. Oh, Black Panther came after that. And, you know, but, but, and Black Panther was good, too. But, I mean, the Galactus thing, yeah. 
Yeah. That's one that now goes into all the, the, the reprint mm -hmm. things. Yeah. Um, and they were just um, they were just having such a good time. You could just feel it. That yeah. whole Marvel thing was that was fun. Mm -hmm. um, I'm trying to think of anything else. Alan Moore also did Miracle Man, but I was yeah. I never could really get into Miracle Man. Mm -hmm. I think I came. It was it was sort of specific to its time, and by the time I saw it. It was like, oh, I've seen better Alan Moore yeah. since then, you know, so this is... Captain Britain with... Oh, right, yes. and Night Raven, he did Night all those Raven. things. Um, uh, when we went to Europe that time, I was traveling around England, going to comic book stores, trying to buy old Alan Moore stuff. And I remember going into one comic book store, and I said, you got any Alan Moore? Mm -hmm. And he said, oh, you Americans, you think <laughs> Alan Moore is so great. <laughs> And they, you know, the, the expression, the prophet is without honor in his own country. The, the English were, were over Alan Moore by that time, which was odd to me. But yeah, so that's the best I can do. Yeah. Well, then that's it. Thank you so much for this interview. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so, so much for making so many fans happy. And uh, good luck with the next adventures. Thank you. And we're mm -hmm. waiting for you next year, in, in two years, some... some, some where in the future uh, come again to the festival or uh, convention we will uh, be waiting for you. I would love to. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Отдельное спасибо следующим замечательным, чудесным моим любимым людям, а именно Антону Бардукову, Кадажуку, Диане Лагу, Happy Final, Кариму, Некрофагу, Никите Карику, Роману, Вадиму Хрулеву, Юрахе 1993, Юрию Лукашевичу, Анатолию Моцару, Григорию Фарафонову, Максиму Марченко, Левиафана 941, Константину Адамову, Александру Крылову, Анастасии Саджерон, Мэри Шер, Максиму, Родиону Скрябину, Лосяшу, Не Максиму, Олле Полякову, Владимиру Лукарду Данилову, Владимиру Куплюкову и Дмитрию Безугуму за поддержку канала на сервисе Patreon.